Zach Goldsmith thinks he can ban people from going hunting, a visit to the SCI show here in Las Vegas would change his mind. He might see he'd have more luck banning art or children. This is my 36th year. Wow. I started in 1985 at uh, Reno. What was the show like in those days? Small, you knew everybody, a lot of fun. And then days, as I like to think, it was a club. Um, but today, I think it's a business. Former MP Zach, now ennobled and given a government job by his school friend Boris Johnson, wants to ban trophy imports. He thinks that will stop people from going hunting overseas and it will help wildlife. We could say so many people exist online. We talk a lot on, on digital platforms. We say all oh, conservation this and that, but we don't contribute much to it but hunters do. The anti-hunting argument is if you don't hunt it, it will do even better. Oh, I don't think so, because who pays, you know, for all con con consideration, you know, for all programs is hunters, you know. The term I like to use is environmental imperialism. And it's, it's really, uh, it is imperialism because we're imposing our values on autonomous and independent countries who, in many cases, are doing a great job of managing their own wildlife and they know how to. There are other difficulties with Zach's plan. When is a trophy a trophy and when is it furniture? I think a lot of it has to do with education. You have to educate the, the politicians. They, they don't know what they're talking about. What offends Zach is people bringing fur, horns and antlers home from overseas. He's got a problem. These polar bears are exactly what the hunters paid for and shot, and they're fakes. Carefully CNC'd, and they cost $18,000 each. So we're, we're simply creating a recreation of a hunted trophy. So a hunter hunts a rhino, for instance, they take photos, they take measurements, and then our team will meticulously recreate that animal down to the features like the, uh, the, the way the, the coloration, the, the exact horn, like it looks like that hunted trophy when we're finished. So it, it is in a sense an exact recreation of that hunted trophy. And we've developed the technology and the processes to do that. Um, much of that's proprietary, but um, we've, we've been developing it for years and I've reached a point where we are literally able to recreate that animal. The hunter hunts the animal because they want to have the trophy in their trophy room. So we kind of jumped the whole export-import thing by recreating the hunted trophy. So yeah, it does in a sense nullify the uh, belt. And for just $300, there's a stand here that will allow you to scan your antlers into your iPad and 3D print them when you get home. Inside spread, outside spread, tip to tip, all the numbers that you see are auto-populated from the computer once you get the three-dimensional scan. Once uh, you proof it, you go through it and you look and you see exactly uh, what the scan contains, you make sure all the data is correct. It's as easy as pressing one button and it auto populates the score sheet. So, this is a score sheet we have for our deer tournament in Texas Boone and Crockett and SCI. And you can see on SCI the T measurements. You can cross check, you can take a tape out if you want to and, and make sure that those are exact, all the way down to circumference measurements. So, it's as easy as six clicks from the time you start the scan to you generate a score of that animal. If you ever want to produce another replica, like that we've scanned here, this is an actual 3D print we've done, all the way down to jewelry of your actual animal. So we can make pendants, earrings, cufflinks, anything of your actual animal in 88 different materials once we have your three-dimensional scan. So. Just one political question. We've got a, a possible trophy import ban coming in in the UK. We don't need to import trophies anymore, do we? No, not at all. Uh, you, at this point, would be exporting plastic or resin, because that is what we produce, uh, 3D print, the medium of your, of your trophy, once we have the 3D scan. So a ban on trophies won't stop trophies. What does Zach's nipping away at hunting sports achieve? It hurts conservation, that's what the science says. It hurts incomes in rural areas. We commit about probably about twelve thousand pounds a year to attending American shows. 
but uh, we wouldn't spend that if we weren't sure it, it brought a big uh, return. And it's not just for the, the, the stocking and shooting. We also now do a lot of holidays that are linked to local hotels, castles, tours. So we can have average couples booking here for the 10 day trip to Scotland. And in that 10 days they'll hunt maybe four days and six days will be touring. I think part of the attraction of Scotland, which is a tragedy that most uh, of the Scottish government and probably the UK government don't realise, is the big passion for Scotland is Scotland's tradition in uh, hunting and field sports. Neil has been coming to SCI for 10 years. He has a partner in Texas who helps handle sales. It's a major operation. Uh, so we do tours, castle tours, distillery tours, uh, golf tours. Um, so anything that, that anyone is interested in Scotland for, we, we've done Outlander tours from the TV program. Zach's replacement for trophy hunting, ecotourism, is tiny. Nobody's interested in it. It barely pays for itself, let alone wildlife conservation. Well, I can be absolutely honest with you, and it's figures we, if we ever wanted to, Charlie, or we needed to, we could demonstrate. One good stag stalking booking here is equivalent to an entire year's income from the wildlife tourism business. Coming from Kenya, I don't have much of an experience of hunting but I've had um, access or, you know, know people who have been hunters and they've been great. They, they fund, you know, most of the wildlife conservation um, in Kenya and many other countries. Don't think this is a market that's standing still. People love innovation here. How about going big game hunting with an air gun? Well, you can. This is a 50 caliber production line air gun. It will shoot between a 200 and 550 grain slug. It can use buffalo bullets, it can use solids, it can use softs. There's a lot of flexibility to it, but the PSI, the pounds per square inch this develops is 4,500 PSI. And this will allow two shots, two full power shots, enough power to to take a Cape Buffalo. So if Zach wants to ban all this, if he wants to ban a community and a community of conservation heroes, he's got his work cut out. Last week, the UK's Channel 4 News was horrified to report that the hunters of the world are actually raising money to lobby against Zach's ban. The 2022 Safari Club International Convention raised more than $15 million over four days to pay for conservation and lobbying worldwide through auctions like this. Zach knows all about money. He inherited lots of it. Here's something else he hasn't considered. His trophy import ban is going to wipe values off properties owned by some of the richest families in the world. And they don't like that. But whether you agree with it or you don't, if you take away an incentive of a buyer to buy something, whether it be a packet of polos or, or a $95 million property in Africa, um, it's, they're less likely to buy it. And it's just that simple. I mean, so is it going to bring the industry to its knees? No. But if it passes in England, I fear that what will happen is it will sweep across Europe very quickly, as tends to be the case these days. Um, now, if you take Europe out of the picture, that will have a tremendous effect on countries like Africa. And, and the problem, the knock-on effect is what people, I think, don't understand about big game hunting, certainly, but also just when, when, a, when a person goes to Africa, to Namibia, perhaps, and buys a property of this kind of distinction, um, a lot of people benefit from that. And when somebody does go big game hunting, the, the fees that are tremendous, a lot of that money goes towards maintaining the ability for people to big game hunt, which means maintaining lots of healthy animals. Best thing Zach can do is drop it. His friend George Monbiot says he got it wrong about trophy hunting. If Zach doesn't, wildlife will suffer, poor people will suffer, and rich people will question the direction of the British government.